Drive. My name is Marie Zell and I will be your online host for today. If this is your first time visiting us, please let us know. You can text me to 604-285-5770 or visit mythrive.info and we will mail you a Thrive stainless steel water bottle. We are delighted to have you here at Thrive. In Psalm 127 verse 3, the Bible says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. Here at Thrive Kids, we nurture the children on the living word of truth for God's greater praise and glory. We want to make sure that the children have an amazing experience online, just like their parents. So don't forget to visit mythrive.info forward slash Thrive Kids for all the kids' activities and for the access to the Zoom class every Sunday from 10.45 a.m. to 11.15 a.m. Spring is in the air, flowers are blooming and the temperature becomes pleasant. What do you like more about spring? The warmer weather or the pretty flower blossoms everywhere? You can leave the sun emoji for the warmer weather or a flower emoji for the pretty blossoms in the chat room. miss seeing you here at Thrive. Take a selfie of yourself watching from home and share it on your social media. Don't forget to add hashtag Thrive Church online. Now sit back and stay focused for the powerful message from Pastor JB. everybody and welcome to Thrive Church Online. It is so good to have you here. My name is JB. I'm one of the pastors here at Thrive. And if this is your first time here, you are what we call our VIP. Everyone say our VIP. And we especially want to welcome you. In fact, we've got a special gift to give to all of our VIPs today. If you are here for the first time, you're new to Thrive, if you want to go to mythrive.info and touch the button that says new to Thrive, we'd love to send straight to your door your very own Thrive Church stainless steel water bottle. Just a way to say thanks so much for joining us today. Can we give all of our VIPs a big hand in this place right now? So good to have you here. In fact, we've got a saying here at Thrive is that welcoming is not just what we do, it's who we are. And so it's so good to have you here at church. Would you welcome one another to church today? Would you say in your chat rooms, good morning? Would you tell your neighbor, good morning? Would you give each other a high five, a handshake, a warm hug, or an air high five, an air handshake, an air hug, whatever's appropriate? Let's welcome one another to the house of God today. You guys are an amazing church, and it is so good to have you here. Can't wait to get into the message with all of you today. But hey, guess what? Today marks one year that we've been doing online church together. Isn't that incredible? Wow. It has been an incredible year. Never do we expect that we would ever go completely online. Never do we expect that we ever do that for a whole year. But praise God that all this past year, God's grace has been sufficient that throughout this past year, we've seen God do amazing things, and we are so incredibly grateful. Uh, and, you know, we've seen more people make decisions to receive Jesus in their lives than any other year. Let's give God a big hand for that. That's amazing. We've seen, you know, leaders in our church rising up, young leaders coming up. We've seen and done things we've never done before. It's been an incredible year. It's been a challenging year, but we're believing that hopefully the time for us to get back together on site again is coming sooner than later. Uh, we still want to keep our online ministry going, of course, but to help us with that, uh, we wanted to encourage each of you who's watching today to fill out a survey. Uh, and this survey, is just ask you some questions to get a sense of where you're at in terms of one day when the government restrictions uh, are off and one day when we're able to reopen again, where are you at in terms of all of that? We'd love to hear you so that that will help us with our planning going forward. And so whether you're here for the first time, you've been here to Thrive before, we'd love to hear you fill out that survey and we'd love to get your feedback. That would help us so very much. Turn your neighbor and say the best is yet to come. 
The best is yet to come. You guys bring your Bibles here today? Well, if you brought your Bibles, it's time to get that out. And uh, we're going to make this proclamation together in faith, just as a way to get our hearts ready for the message today. So why don't you hold up your Bible like so right now, and we're just going to make this proclamation together. This is just a fun way to get our hearts ready for the message today. We're going to say together right now, this is my Bible. It is God's word. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I open up my heart so that God's word can come in and change my life, and I will never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We're super excited. Easter is coming. April the 4th is Easter Sunday. It's only a few weeks away, and I can't wait next week to unveil to you our plans for Easter Sunday. You don't want to miss it, and we look forward to not just celebrating uh, together as a church, but reaching out to our city and cities around the world with the hope that we have in Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Hey, by the way, if you are here and you're new to church and you're new to Christianity, Christianity, you're new to Jesus, you're new to the Bible, maybe you've never been to a church before, maybe you're coming in from another faith background or no faith background at all, we are especially thrilled that you're here. We hope you find that Thrive is a safe place for you, a place where you can call home, a place that you can find encouragement in, a place where you can find hope to help you into this coming week. If you've got questions about stuff, like, you know, how do I know there's a God? How do I know that we can trust the Bible? You know, like, what, like how, how, what, why should I even consider Christianity when, you know, so many Christians I know they're hypocrites, all those. If you have questions like that, then you know what? these are safe questions to ask here at Thrive Church. In fact, we did a whole series on this just one year ago called Overcome My Unbelief. And you can access all of the messages and episodes there at mythrive.info or at thrivechurch.ca. We'd love to help you in whatever we can. If you have questions, prayer requests, you can also email us at info at thrivechurch.ca. Go to mythrive.info as well for next steps as well. Well, we're talking about Easter. That's coming up in a few weeks, but let's talk about today. Today, we're continuing a very special series we're doing here at Thrive Church. It's called Heart at Rest. Everyone say Heart at Rest. And in this series, we're talking about how do you have a rested heart in a restless world? In a time in history where there's a lot of things that can cause us unrest, how do you maintain a heart that's at rest, a heart that is at peace in the midst of all that? That's what we're talking about in this series. Fortunately, the Bible has so much to say about how to have a heart at rest in the midst of a restless world. And if you've missed any of the episodes of this series so far, then I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel channel or go to our Thrive Church Vancouver podcast and you can check out all of that and hopefully you find it encouraging and beneficial for you and for those you share it with, encourage you to do so. Well, today in the next episode of our series called Heart at Rest, I want to give you a message that I'm super excited to share with you. It is called Rest in God's Presence. Rest in God's Presence. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, you need to rest in God's presence? You need to rest in God's presence. I'm here to tell you, if there's nothing else you learned from this message today, I'm here to tell you this, is that the best medicine for a restless heart is to rest in God's presence. And see, you know, before we look at a very special Psalm, uh, which is Psalm 62, uh, in fact, if you have your Bibles, you can grab that Bible right now and turn to Psalm 62. If you're not, not really sure, if you're new to the Bible, you can open up your Bible to the middle and uh, it is uh, going to be right there. Psalm 62 uh, is where we're going to be. Psalms is a collection of prayers and songs that people have written to God. Uh, some of the most honest emotions of the Bible you will find in the book of Psalms. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 62 together as we look at resting in God's presence. But even before we look at Psalm 62, let me take you really quickly to two other verses that are right around Psalm 62. Psalm 63 verse 1 says, O God, you are my God earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. See, the guy who writes this psalm, his name is David. David, he is the king of Israel at the time. He finds himself in a desert physically, but he's also in a desert spiritually where he finds that he's living in a land that cannot satisfy him, where he's living in a circumstance in a season where he can't find satisfaction anywhere. I can't get no satisfaction. He just can't find 
satisfaction anywhere. You can't like, it's like, they're, 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 it's a dry and weary land where there seems to be no water. Have you felt that way before? Not just physically, but spiritually, you just, or even emotionally, just feel dry. You feel like there's nothing that can satisfy you. No matter how many you know, Netflix series you binge on, no matter how much food you eat, no matter how many people you spend time with, no matter what you do, it's like, you just feel that like something is missing. There's a restlessness in you. David is talking about that as well. And then, you know, he's talking about how, oh God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. He's, he's saying that, you know what? I believe that somehow in the midst of all of my thirst that you're the one that I need. You're the one who satisfies. David's not the only one who felt that way. Psalm 42, this is written by a group called the Sons of Korah. That sounds like a, a heavy metal band, doesn't it? You know, ladies and gentlemen, the Sons of Korah. Ding, 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 ding. But you know, you're gonna notice that the Psalm 42 uh, is, uh, it doesn't sound like a heavy metal song, uh, Look, look, look at it. It's, 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 a, it's actually uh, very gentle. Look at it. It says, verse one says, as the deer pants for streams of water, that's not a heavy metal song at all, or it could be, I don't know. But as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You know, I, I used to like listen to the song as a kid. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs after you. And, and what, what's this song talking about? It's, rep, it's, it's also communicating the same, the same thing, is that you and I, we have this built-in thirst for God. Is that, it's this, and then, you know, in the book of Ecclesiastes puts it this way, is that God has placed eternity in your heart. In other words, you've got this God-sized hole in your heart that only God can fill. And when you try to fill that hole with anything other than God, with money, with friends, with, you know, status, with, you know, you know, followers on social media, you, you try to fill it with everything else that you think is going to make you happy. You, until you fill it with God, it's always going to feel like there's something missing. There's always going to be like this restlessness, like something is missing. Like there's, there's a missing, a huge piece of the puzzle that's missing in your life. That's because you were made to be in God's presence. You were made for resting in God. And until you find and rest in God's presence, you'll feel there's something that's missing. There's something that's empty. And that's the way that everyone experiences it. And I encourage you, if you're here today, how do we have rest in God's presence? Well, we're going to talk about that today. The lesson we can learn from these verses is you can't have a heart at rest without a relationship with God. If you want a heart that's at rest, you need to get with God. God is who you need. You need to rest in God's presence. You know, I was speaking with a married couple a few weeks ago. They're good friends of ours. And they're just sharing how, you know, the husband right now is working in Vancouver. The wife and their sons are living in Taiwan. And so they're kind of separated right now, uh, you know, by an ocean. And, you know, uh, you know, every night the older son would be crying for his dad. Every night before he goes, he goes, I miss daddy. I want daddy. Where's daddy? Oh, and, and it was just one of those things where a few weeks ago was Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year in Taiwan. And, you know, this older son, um, he, you know, took his red pocket money, you know, the hong bao, like the, the, the red pocket money that you receive at Chinese New Year. And he, he's, you know, I think maybe about just about, what, eight years old or so. He, he hands this red pocket to his mom and says, mommy, take this. And mom, the mom is like, you know, what, why, why give this to me? He says, could you give this to daddy's boss in Vancouver so that daddy doesn't have to work and he can come and be with us here in Taiwan? That's what he said. And when I heard that, I was just, I was really touched by that because it just goes to show how much this little boy wants his dad to be with him and how there's no money in the world that can replace the presence of his father. And why do I mention that? It's because you were made for a close relationship with your heavenly father. And until you have that, until you have the presence of your heavenly father close and in your life, there will always be this restlessness in your heart. You will always feel like something is missing. And then no matter how much money you have, no matter how much you have in life, that still something is missing. And you know, that's why the Bible message is so relevant because the Bible says that when we were separated from God, when we had no way of reaching him, when we sinned against him and did our own thing, there was no way we could get to God, not now, not ever. When we had disqualified ourselves from having anything to do with a perfect God, because we're not perfect. When we were separate from God, that God, he said, said when, when there was no amount of money that we could pay to get to God, God got to us when he sent Jesus Christ to pay the highest price so that 
you and I could be forgiven of our sins so that you and I could be brought back to God and have a relationship with God again. That's through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the grave. Can you give Jesus a big hand and a big shout in this place together right now? Amen. Because God knew that we would be restless until we find rest in him. Because God knew that the most precious gift that we can have is the presence of God. He sent Jesus Christ to make God's presence in our lives possible. That's why when Jesus died, that curtain that would separate the people from the most holy place in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom to show that because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, it is finished. Your sins are forgiven and you can be brought back to God because of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so with all that in mind, that brings us to Psalm 62, because today we're going to learn how do you find rest in God's presence. Psalm 62 is written also by King David. It's written for uh, a guy called Jeduthun, who's also known as Ethan in the Bible. He's a musical director. And Psalm 62 says it this way. It says, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. Stop right there. See, what is it saying? Two lessons. Number one, my soul finds rest in God alone. Only in God does our soul truly find rest. Only in God. Only in God. Not in anything else. Only in God do we truly find rest for our soul. And number two, it says when, is, that, is this, is, is when, when David writes, my soul finds rest in God alone. If you were to take the original Hebrew and translate it literally word for word, what it would say is this. It would say, only to God is my soul silence. Only to God is my soul silence. That's not a typo. That's, that's, that's what it says. If word for word, you're translating word for word, what it's saying, it's saying only to God is my soul silence. In other words, what it's basically saying, if you wanted to, to translate verse one, maybe even more accurately, you could say this. You could say that, what, that, that, that verse one is saying, in silence, my soul waits for God. And see, what does that mean? Is that there's something about being in silence before God that is good for the soul. There's something about not talking and just being silent before God, not saying anything, but just being silent before God that is soothing for the soul. And, and uh, have, do you do that? Do you, are, are you in the habit of having silent time before God? A lot of times my game time, my God and me experience time, my, the time I spend with God, a lot of times it's just silence. I don't sing a lot on my own. A lot of times I'm just sitting in the car or I'm sitting on the floor and, I, and I'm just silent before God because it soothes the soul to be in God's presence in silence. I find that that's when I hear God speak often the most is in the silence. Uh, oftentimes some of my best sermon ideas come in the silence. It's, you know, in the silence that God reminds me of verses that I've read in the past. It's in the silence that sometimes get my best ideas for what we can do next as a church. It's in the silence that I, I feel God's presence. And so in the same way, if you want to rest in God's presence, a big, lear- a big, big thing to learn to do is to learn to be silent in the presence of God. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. Psalm 62, verse three and four says this, read it with me. It says, how long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? They fully intend to topple me from his lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths, they bless, but in their hearts, they curse. Selah. What's selah? Selah simply means pause and think about it. Pause and meditate on. So let's just think about it. What's going on? See, David is waiting in silence for God. And why is he? Well, we don't know exactly what, what point in David's life that he wrote the Psalm, but the fact is it was a difficult and stressful time for David. Is that David, he's dealing with some attacks from people. He's dealing with some unfair criticisms from people. He's dealing with people who want to take him down, who want to ruin him, want to slander him. Has that ever happened to you before? Where someone's attacking you and you feel like, you know, what, what did I do to deserve this? Has that ever happened to you before? David's in that situation right now. And when he says this leaning wall, this tottering fence, he's either describing himself and how he feels about himself. Like I'm just about to fall over. I'm like this leaning wall, this tottering fence. I'm just about to collapse. And still these people are coming after me. Or he's describing the way that they see him. Like, oh, this guy, we're going to topple him over. He's a leaning, he's a leaning wall. He's a tottering fence. Either way, in this stressful time, what is David doing? He's choosing to find his rest in the presence of God. And see, what's the lesson here? Just like Pastor Shard's powerful sermon a few weeks ago talking about rest from stress is that when you're, when you're stressed and you're not at rest, the best place you can go is the presence of God. 
The best medicine for a restless heart is God's presence. Look at Psalm 62, verse five and eight. It says, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Notice in these verses, David, he's getting personal and even possessive when he talks about God. He calls God. God, my rock, verse six. In other words, he is my rock, the one I stand on, the one I build my life on. You know, he's the the one I have confidence in. He's my rock. In verse six, he also calls him my salvation. God is the one who saves me. He's the one who rescues me. He's the one who delivers me from myself, from my situation, from my sin. That's my salvation. Verse six, he says nothing. He says, he's my fortress. In other words, he's the one I'm safe and secure in. He's the one that I derive security from. He is is the one I hide in. And then verse seven talks about he's my mighty rock. He's my refuge, the one I hide in my shelter from danger and trouble. And what's going on here? Notice this is that David is like almost repeating himself. He's he's using different phrases to describe God. And why? Well, let me put it to you this way. When you haven't experienced God personally, when you haven't experienced the presence of God personally in your life, the fact is you won't have much to say about God. Few words are needed to describe God when you haven't experienced much of God. But when you've experienced God personally in your life, that experience brings with it a wealth of personal understanding of who God is. And, and, and with it, your, your words become like these storehouses for the wealth that God has given you about him. It's like you, these different titles you give to God, these different ways you describe God, these words you have for God become these ways that you hold the treasure that is your knowledge of who God is. And see, and, 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 and I want to encourage you to do this, is that, is that to, to speak to God, is, 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 to, is to talk to him and to tell him what he means to you. Be, be creative like David and find words to describe who he is, because when you've experienced God and you've got a personal relationship with him, the result is hope in your life. See, verse five says, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. You know, here this year, our whole theme for the entire year here at Thrive Church is contagious hope. And we're saying that hope is not just a feeling. Hope is a person. His name is Jesus. And hope is not just something we manufacture ourselves, but hope is a natural byproduct of resting in God's presence. Is that by resting in God's presence, what naturally comes to you is something called hope. See, Psalm 62 verse eight says this. It says, trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. And there's the word again, Selah. See, God wants to meet us where we're at. He is a God who just like Marcy was sharing last week, saying that God wants a spirit to spirit connection with us. God wants a heart to heart connection with us. God doesn't just want your rote obedience. He doesn't just want your heartless praise. He wants you to have a heart to heart connection with him. That means that meeting with God, resting in God's presence requires that we be honest with God about where we're at. It requires that we be honest about our feelings, honest with our emotions. With God, it's okay to not be okay because that's how much God loves you. He knows everything about you anyways. You might as well be real with him. You don't need to wear a mask when you're with God because he loves you unconditionally. He loves you just the way you are. You can be real with him. And so when it comes to your feelings, don't dam up your feelings, but pour them out before God when you rest in his presence. Amen. Since there's no hiding from God, since he loves us so much, we can be completely real with our God. See, since our souls were made to rest in God's presence, since the best medicine for a restless heart is God's presence, then practically speaking, how do we find rest in God's presence? Well, we're going to talk about that right now. See, today I thought I'd show you as part of you kind of maybe getting some better idea of how to rest in God's presence. I thought I'd show you how I personally rest in God's presence. Is that okay? I thought I'd show you how I spend time with God and how I rest in God's presence And to show you this, it requires that I let you into my life even more than I usually do. I I usually, you know, I'm pretty transparent with you guys about the struggles I go through, about the failures I've experienced. You know, you, 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 so those you've been with us for a while, you know quite a bit about me already because I, you know, I I just tend to, you know, tend to, tend to not be that uh, closed about these things with you guys. In part, it's to show you that I'm a normal person just like you are. I go through struggles just like you do. I I get tempted just like you do. And and it's, it's one of those things 
things where, uh, you know, like I, I, I guess, you know, my embarrassment is your entertainment or my embarrassment is your edification, whatever helps. But let me tell you this, since we want to talk about how to rest in God's presence, I want to show you how I rest in God's presence. It requires that we go inside my mind a little bit more. And let me tell you this is we're going to go behind this door into my mind. And let me tell you a warning first is it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be comfortable for those. Oh yeah, we got it. Don't just rest assured. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, don't go past this door. All right. But if you want to rest in God's presence, want to learn how I do it, then join me in going past this door into my mind. Let's learn how to rest in God's presence. All right, here we go. You know, as you can see, as usual, empty and absent, but yeah, we're going to go in north. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right. Well, welcome to my mind. And uh, I got to let you know, our team worked really hard to create an artistic, physical representation of my mind. A big hand to our team for doing that. Big thank you to you guys. But I, I need to let you know and clarify a few things is that my mind typically doesn't look like this. If this was a true representation of my mind, uh, then it would be a lot dirtier than this. <laughs> it wouldn't be as organized as this. Uh, it wouldn't be as empty as this because I'm always so full of stuff, uh, all all just full of thoughts, all full of stuff in my mind going on all the time. So it wouldn't quite look like this. Uh, but nonetheless, this will do. Make yourself at home. I'm going to make myself at home as well. I've got my Mr. Rogers cardigan today to make me feel a little bit more at home as well. And, uh, you know, you know, if if this was really my mind, I think you would probably see pictures of my wife, Charlene. You'd see pictures of, uh, you know, my sons, Bradley and Caleb, because they're often on my mind. Uh, if this is really my mind, you'd probably see pictures of each and every one of you Thrive Church, because you guys are so often on my mind. Uh, you'd probably see pictures of uh, Beyonce, because I just recently watched Dreamgirls. Uh, you'd probably see, you know, maps of our church building, because I'm thinking about, you know, how we're going to reopen the church building down the road. Uh, but Welcome to my mind. Would you turn your name and say, we're in JB's mind. We're in JB's mind. All right. Well, one thing that is quite accurate, though, is that I've got this, what I call my counselor's chair. You know how you know, counselors, they usually have this long chair that you can sit in if you're taking counseling. And uh, the fact is this, is that the Bible says that when you receive Jesus Christ as your savior, that not only are you forgiven of your sins, not only do you become a child of God, but the Bible says that you receive the most precious gift. It's the gift of God's Holy Spirit. And Jesus even says that this Holy Spirit who is from God is your counselor. He's your comforter. He's here to live in your heart, to teach you and to counsel you in the way that you should go. And, uh, you know, the fact is, if you have Jesus in your heart, you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you to direct you in the way that you should go. He's your comforter. He's your counselor. And with that in mind, that's why I have got a counselor's chair in my mind. And I was not going to be a counselor, but more like a counselee today, because I just want be really real with you guys as we get into resting in God's presence. Because we talk about how to rest in God's presence, we need to come to God as we are. We need to be real with God, real with our emotions. God wants a heart-to-heart -heart connection with us. And so, you know, can I be real with you guys today, even more so than usual? Uh, today, I, I brought my computer as well. Uh, got some stuff I wanted to share with you in there. But the fact is this, is that, you know, if I were to ask you how this COVID season has been for you, what's one word you would use to describe this COVID season for you? If there's one word you would use to describe this COVID season, maybe you can put in the chat room right now or, or tell your neighbor right now, if there's one word you use to describe this COVID season, what word would that be? Would it be lonely? Uh, would it be difficult? Would it be challenging? Would it be, you know, just uh, stressful? Uh, what would this season be if it was in one word? Well, let me tell you this, is that um, this COVID season for me, uh, I think if there was one word I'd use to describe it, uh, I'd describe it as uh, kind of silent. Um, when I was a young Christian, I was about 18 years old, and I remember I would be sitting in church uh, and I'd be listening to sermons and I, I would be, you know, sitting there and at the end of every sermon, I'd always take a, 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 one of those envelopes that you put your offerings in, your donations in. And I didn't have a job at the time, so I wasn't making any money, but I, I would use these offering envelopes anyways, but I use it for a different purpose. I would take those offering envelopes, I'd grab a pen and I would usually 
write this note to encourage the pastor who was speaking that day. And I remember I uh, would go up to that pastor and say, hey, thanks so much for preaching the message today. And I'd, I'd give him this little note. And, and if it was a pastor I knew well, he'd always be very like, oh, I love you, man. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I was just having uh, lunch with uh, a pastor uh, that I grew up with uh, just a few weeks ago. And uh, he said, you know, I still, 30 years later, I still keep your notes. You know, I, I still keep those notes that you write me. And I was actually kind of surprised, but, but then I wasn't surprised. If, if you told me this, you know, 25 years ago that he still kept my notes, I'd be a little bit surprised. Like, you know, I mean, dude, like you're, you're a pastor who's, you know, spent his whole life, you know, God's used you to build this, you know, this amazing church, you know, you know, hundreds of people, if not thousands look to you for leadership and guidance and, and all this stuff. Like why, why would you keep uh, like a little note from some stuff from someone like me? And I, I wouldn't have understood it maybe, you know, 25 years ago, but I, I understand it today. It's because as a pastor myself now, I, I realize this is that there is this unique pressure that comes from being a pastor. Uh, and it's, it's tough to describe that kind of pressure. Um, it's something that's unlike any other pressure I've ever felt in my life. Uh, it's different from the pressure of being a, a husband or the pressure of being uh, a, a parent or the pressure of being, you know, a, a lawyer or, or, you know, a student. It, it's kind of different. Um, it's, it's a pressure that um, yeah, I think very few people who don't have that role can really fully understand. And as a result, it can get kind of lonely sometimes. Um, and I, I think, you know, it's one of those things where in addition to being a bit lonely, uh, in addition to the pressure, uh, you can also feel a little bit draining sometimes as well. Because don't get me wrong, you know, planting throughout church, leading throughout church, one of the most humbling, most rewarding, most joyful, and also one of the hardest things. I would say it is the hardest thing I've ever done. It's actually harder than parenting for me. Uh, in part, it's because, you know, I've got an amazing wife in Charlene, who's an amazing mom. I've got two boys who uh, I feel really fortunate to be their dad. Um, but when it comes to, 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 to pastoring and to planning a church, that, that the pressure of that is, is harder. Um, it's, it's different. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you feel like you're, you're giving a lot. Um, and, you know, when people kind of come to you and they go out of your way to contact you, it's not usually because they want to thank you or encourage you. It's usually because they want something. Uh, they, they want some help. They want some counseling. They want some advice. They want a verse. They want a prayer. They want money. They want something. And, and so it's one of those where, you know, in COVID season, um, I think it got actually even harder for me. Because, you know, we didn't get into like pastors, yes, pastors. I don't think any pastor would tell you that, oh yeah, I got into pastoring because I, I love to see people on screens. <laughs> I don't think anybody uh, would say that, but that's kind of the way it's been this past year with COVID. And on top of that, you know, it used to be that when we had, you know, on-site services and we gathered together uh, at the Thrive Building, that, you know, after every message, every, every sermon, every service, you know, there probably about five to 10 people would come up to me and say, hey, thank you for the message. Or, you know, thank you for that. That really blessed me. And, and, and you know, it's, it's one of those things where during COVID, um, it's been a lot more silent of a season. Uh, it's been a, a season where, you know, sometimes a Sunday will go by and the only person who says thank you might be my wife or <laughs> maybe my son. Or, or maybe Pastor Tim will send me a little text and say, hey, thanks for that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you might be, oh, but JB, remember who you're doing this for, man. It's all about Jesus. You, you have to be a servant. And I, I get that. Hey, trust me. I tell that to myself all the time. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's not about my glory. It's about Jesus. It's not, it's not about me. It's not. It never has been, never will be. If that's the reason why you get into pastoring, then you're in the wrong business because it's not about us. But still, we are human. And the words or the lack of words can definitely affect a person for sure. And you know that in any relationship, that's the case. You know, even Jesus, when, you know, he healed the 10 lepers and the 10 walked away and then one came back and said, thank you. Jesus wasn't impressed. He wasn't like, oh, good man. He was like, where are the other nine? <laughs> like I healed, didn't I heal 10? Where are the nine? Why, well, just one guy comes back and says, thank you. And um, you know, it's no wonder that the Bible often talks about you. Know, we want to encourage one another daily because words have the power of life and death. We want to you know, speak life into one another. Uh, that's why we truly try to go out of our way to encourage you guys as much as we can. Um, 
And, uh, and so with that in mind, you know, since we've been here doing church online for about a year, can we give all of our team a big, huge hand in this place right now? Can we just encourage them right now? Oh, come on, there's more in than that. Can you give them all of your thanks right now? A big thank you to our media team, to, to Ryan and Grace and Amy, who are here week after week, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, for all the, the people who behind the scenes have been making our services possible. A huge thank you to you. You know, our, uh, thank you guys for the ways you've encouraged our preaching school students, our, our worship team. Uh, we all need encouragement. Amen. Amen. Our, our, you know, and your pastors need encouragement too. I think Pastor Shar needs encouragement. I, I think I could use encouragement as well because there's a certain pressure, there's a certain loneliness, um, there's a certain draining that comes with the role of leading a church where it affects the condition of your heart if you're not careful. And how many of us know that, you know, these kind of things, they can really wear on you emotionally unless you have a way to replenish yourself. And how do you know that, you know, especially when it comes to being a pastor, but this also applies to being a parent to a lot of jobs is that the heart matters. The condition of your heart is so crucial is that the Bible says that your heart is the wellspring of life. In other words, everything flows from your heart. Jesus says that out of your heart, the mouth speaks. It's that almost like everything you do, you might not feel it, you might not sense it, but the fact is that when your heart is not in the right place, not only does it affect you, but it affects everyone else around you. It affects everyone in your home. It affects every relationship you have because out of your heart, everything else flows. And that's why it's so crucial, you know, that you have a healthy heart, that you take good care of your heart, that you know how to have a rested heart. And that's why we're here. And especially for me as a pastor, like it's really tough to do the job when you don't have a heart that's healthy or at rest. And uh, yeah, I told you this wasn't going to be very comfortable, did I? Well, welcome to my mind. And, you know, in case you're here and you might be struggling emotionally a little bit, maybe it's been a tough season. Maybe it's been a stressful season. Maybe it's been a worrying season for you. Maybe it's been a discouraging season for you. Maybe it's just been a very silent season for you. Then um, I want to uh, tell you, you know, how do you replenish yourself when you're feeling the pressure? How do you replenish yourself when you're feeling drained? How do you replenish yourself when you're feeling lonely? You do so by going into the presence of God. You rest in God's presence. And that's what we're gonna do right now together is that uh, over the next 10 minutes or so, I wanna show you how I rest in God's presence. And I don't just wanna show you how to do it, I want you to do it with me. And so if you wanna make the most this time, I encourage you, don't just sit as a spectator and watch, you're not gonna get very much out of that. That's kinda like doing going to a gym and you see everybody working out and you're just kinda standing there with your arms folded, don't do that. Uh, I wanna encourage you to really, if you wanna make the most this moment, to do this with me together as we try to rest in God's presence, all right? Turn your neighbor and say, let's rest in God's presence. Let's rest in God's presence. Let's rest in God's presence. You know, um, more than anything, more than, you know, time with God being this really emotional experience or time with God being this very revelatory thing where you, you see all these things in God's word and the scriptures that you'd never seen before. Really a daily time with God, what we call here at Thrive, our game time, our God and me experience time. Really your time with God is just an exercise in humbling yourself before God every day. It's an exercise in discipline. It's an exercise in consistency. It's an exercise in humility. It's not super sexy. It's not always super exciting, but it's amazing what God can do when you on a consistent basis, you give him some time to rest in his presence. And I, I wanna encourage you today, maybe you're here and you are very comfortable watching services. You're very comfortable listening to sermons, but you don't have the habit of spending daily time with God. You don't have a a habit of spending time with God on your own. If that's you, I want to encourage you to start building that habit today. Because if you don't, you're going to find that it's like expecting that you can go on with life by eating one meal a week where someone feeds you. You eat one meal a week on Sunday morning and every other day you just don't eat at all. And you're, 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 you're just, you're, what, you're not gonna be very healthy at the end of that. So I wanna really encourage you to, to build this into your life. And if, if it helps to show, for me to show you how I do it, and you can copy me in that or, or follow me in that or incorporate the good things you see from that, then great. There's so many different ways to do it, but here's one way that, that I do it. To do this, to spend time in God's presence, you first need to find a place by yourself where you can focus on God. 
And for this, you know, Jesus, he would say that, you know, uh, Jesus would often go to solitary places, to lonely places to pray. He would often withdraw to lonely places and pray. Um, And in the same way, if you want to spend time with God, I encourage you to find a place where you can focus on God. And maybe even right now, maybe you're sitting beside a neighbor and and it's tough for you to focus on God and them at the same time. Uh, Can I encourage you, go find a place where you can focus on God. In fact, if you're a couple, if you really have to do this, you know, one of you watch this 930 service, the other person watch this 1130 service. You, You guys do it in that way where you can have this time to yourself. I encourage you to do that because being able to focus and not be a distraction to others and not be distracted by other people is so very important when you want to have an effective time with God resting in his presence. So that's the first thing. Find a place where you can focus on God. A second thing that you want to do is get some tools to help you. Get some tools to help you. The most important tool you need is God's word. You need the Bible. I happen, to ha- I happen to have the Bible in my computer, so I'm going to use it here. But you want to have your Bible with you. Uh, that helps as well. What we also use here at Thrive, another tool that we provide you is called our game booklet, uh, where inside every day there's a passage from scripture that you can read. And in fact, can we give our game booklet artists a big hand as well? Month after month, they're providing. Oh, come on, there's more than you than that. Give all of our game booklet artists a big hand. Uh, this one was done by one of our high schoolers called Daisy. She did a beautiful job of it. And uh, in fact, I hope we have a game booklet art gallery one day because we have that many game booklet, uh, uh, you know, covers that we've done over the years. Uh, but, you know, I, I use my game booklet to read God's word. I also use my game booklet for another pr- pr- thing because when you're praying to God, when you're trying to draw near to God, sometimes you have other things on your mind. Amen. Right. And so what I'll do usually is I'll, I'll have a pen and, you know, I'll, I'll basically, if I get distracted by a thought, oh, I have to go get the laundry later or I have to go buy some groceries or I have to remember to call this person, I'll actually write it in my game booklet and then I'll write it in and I'll, and I'll leave it and it's out of my mind. That, that's something that I'll do. And just one way to keep me, keep me focused on God during my game time. Uh, and, uh, and so I encourage you to bring your Bible, encourage you to bring your game booklet. Uh, if you don't have one, you can always pick one up from the church office. Uh, and once you've got that tool, those tools, you've found a place where you focus on God, the next thing we're gonna do right now together, and again, if you need to find that place, go find that place. If you need to get those tools, go get those tools. But right now, the next thing we're going to do is just like Psalm 62 says, where it says, find rest in God alone. We're going to do this right now. We're going to find rest in God right now. Is I'm going to invite you to take time to be still before God. Verse one of Psalm 62 says, wait in silence before God. And so right now in the silence, we're just going to have our heart you know, silent before God, because it's something, it's, it's healthy for the soul. I want you to do that right now. Let's be, just, just take 40 seconds to just be silent in God's presence and let your heart just kind of settle in the presence of God. And I want to take a deep breath or a few deep breaths. And after you spend some time just being silent and still before God, the next thing that I'll usually do is I'll just give God what's in my heart. You know, the Bible, Psalm 62, verse eight says, pour out your hearts before God, for he's our refuge. And so whatever's in your heart, you can come to God real before him. You can give him your burdens. You can give him your pain. You can give him your thanks. You can give him your praise. You can give him whatever is in your heart today. And so would you do that right now? Just even in your own words, don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about anyone else. This is between you and God right now. We just start giving God whatever's in your heart today. Let's pour our heart before him right now. Give him whatever's in your heart today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Give him everything today. He knows your heart already, but you might as well tell him it's healthy for your heart when you do. Thank you, Jesus. God, I give you that sadness. I give you that disappointment. God, I give you that. I give you that. I give you that embarrassment. I give you that. I give you that struggle. I give that to you, Lord. I give that to you now. I give it to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Maybe there's a sin you need to confess. You can confess it before God. He loves you. He loves you. And you can confess it to him because he loves you so much. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you so much for being the God who daily bears our burden. 
You're the God who says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so right now, together with all my friends who are watching right now, we just give our burdens to you today. Whether it's a hurt from our past, or it's a sin we need to confess, or it's a problem we don't have an answer to, or it's a worry, it's a pain, uh, it's a disappointment. We also come with our thanks, knowing that in every situation, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised, that you are good and your love endures forever, and that there's always something to be thankful for. And so God, with a thankful heart, with an attitude of gratitude, with an open heart, with a humble heart, with an honest heart, we come before you just as we are. We say thank you so much for being the God who daily bears our burdens. We give everything to you today. We pour out our hearts before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next, I'm going to invite you to do what I do next here is, you know, after being silent before God, after pouring my heart to him, and, and these things can actually last a lot longer than what we're doing right now. Sometimes, sometimes being in silence is all that I do. But the next thing I'll usually do is I'll start reading scripture. And we're going to make it really easy for us today. We're going to go back to Psalm 62. And we'll look at verses 5 to 7. Psalm 62, verse five and seven. We're even put it on the screen for you right now so you can look at it. And we're just gonna read this a few times. And we wanna read it slowly. You wanna let it sink in. And the goal is to find something in these verses that you can cling on to today. Something that you can hang on to today. Something that you can get into your heart today. And so we're gonna read these verses today. And we're gonna read it not just once, but a few times. We're gonna do it slowly. And so we're doing, we're just trying to, the whole goal is to try to get a bit of God's word into our heart today. So can we do that together? Why don't you read it with me? Verse five, it says, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. We're going to read it one more time and really try to let it sink in. Find something you can hang on to from this verse today. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. We're going to read it one more time. And this time, you might even ask yourself, is there a promise I can claim? Is there an attitude I need to change? Is there a truth I need to hang on to? Is there a sin I need to confess? Is there you know, a, a something else from these verses that I can hang on to today? Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Some of you may even want to try to memorize it and get into your heart that way. One last time. And this one, I'm going to encourage you to, to just read it from your heart. See if you can memorize some of it. Try it. We can get in your heart right now. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Thank you, Jesus, that we can find rest for our soul in you alone, that our hope comes from you that you alone are our rock and our salvation, that you are our fortress and we will not be shaken. Thank you that our salvation and our honor depend on God. They depend on you, that you are a mighty rock. You are our refuge, not anyone else, not anything else, not jobs, not money, not the future, not a boyfriend, not a girlfriend, not our kids, not our family, not anything else, not, not what people say or don't say. You are our refuge. You are our rock. You're the one that we find our rest in and our hope comes from you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. And then right after this, what I'll usually do, but we're not gonna do it today is, 
you know, usually every day I'll send you guys a game sharing. And what that is, is Pastor JB's game time sharing is me just sharing from the very passage in the game booklet that we been reading together as a church. I'll send you my thoughts on it and say, hey, in case you weren't sure what to learn from this, here's what I was learning from it. And uh, you can subscribe for that. Uh, we've been doing that for years now. I encourage you to take that up if you haven't yet. And so that's what I'll do. And then finally, what I'll do is that I will journal a prayer. Um, and if you've got a pen handy and a, a you know, piece of paper or on your phone or on your computer, you can do this right now. Is just take a minute to just write out a prayer to God. One of my favorite quotes is, thoughts disentangle themselves as they pass through the lips and the fingertips. In other words, oh, let me say it again. Thoughts disentangle themselves as they pass through the lips and the fingertips. In other words, when you speak out what you're thinking, when you write out what you're thinking, it actually clarifies what you're thinking. And so I want to encourage you to do that. You can write out a prayer. Maybe you don't have something to write with right now. You can just talk to God out loud in your own words right now. I want to encourage you to take a, take a minute right now just to write down something to God. Say something to God. Express yourself to God right now. Would you do that right now? Just take a minute to do that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, Father. Just write a prayer to God. Have you ever written a prayer to God before? You can say, oh, dear, just start with dear God. Just a letter to God. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are my refuge. Thank you that you are my fortress. Thank you that you are in control. Thank you that you're everything that I need. Thank you that all my issues are nothing compared to how great you are. Thank you, Father. You can say that to God. You can talk to God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Finding rest in you today. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you so much that you gave your son so that we could have rest in your presence. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that's a little demonstration of how I usually rest in God's presence. And, you know, oftentimes it's, it's longer than this, but it gives you hopefully an idea of how you can spend time in God's presence if you're not really sure how. How did we spend time in God's presence? Let's recap the steps we took. Number one, we found a place where we could focus on God, not be distracted. Number two, we brought some tools with us. We brought a Bible, maybe a game booklet. Number three, we spent time in silence before God, letting our hearts settle before God. Number four, we poured out our heart to God. You just give God whatever's in your heart. Be real with God about where you're at. And then number five, we read a short passage from scripture a few times, slowly meditating on it, thinking on it, clinging to something on it, asking questions about it. Then number six, we wrote something down. We expressed ourselves to God. And then I might read a game sharing, the game sharing email that I'll send. And then I'll finally pray one final prayer. And that way is just a simple way to spend time in God's presence. And that's how can we can find rest in the times when our heart's not at rest, how we can go to God and find the rest that we need. Praise God. Can we give God a big hand, a big shout in this place together right now? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can find rest in God's presence. You can find rest in God's presence. I'm going to hand the time now to our worship band. They're going to lead us in a song. And as we're singing the song, let's give God our worship. As we're singing the song, let's give God, you know, our best. And at the end of that song, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. For those who have never prayed that prayer before, this is such a significant prayer to pray. It might be the most important prayer you pray all week. I encourage you to stick around as we get ready to pray that prayer together. Thanks, everybody. Let's give God a big hand, a big shout in this place together right now. I said, let's give God a big hand, a big shout, and let's play together right now. Praise God. We can rest in God's presence because Jesus Christ died on the cross to make that possible. Jesus paid the highest price so that we could be with God. And if you've never received the forgiveness that Jesus made possible on the cross, if you've never opened up your heart to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, then if you want rest in God's presence, the most important step you can take toward that is to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And so if that's you and you realize you need that, I wanna encourage you right now uh, to pray a prayer with me. And if you wanna find where that 
that prayer is, uh, you can use your phone and scan the QR code that's on your screen. Alternatively, you can also click the link that's in your chat room right now, and it'll take you to a page that has a prayer that you can pray. At the end of the day, it's the attitude of your heart that counts more than the words you just speak. But this is just a simple tool for you to pray a prayer to invite Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and invite him to your life. And so you're not doing this alone. I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to pray this prayer with you, and you can just follow along. Let's pray this together. Those of you who want to click on that now, go ahead and do that. Those who want to receive Jesus' forgiveness in your life, go ahead and do that with me right now. Let's pray this prayer together. Just repeat it after me. We're going to say, Dear Jesus, thank you that because you love me, you died on the cross to pay for my sins. You rose again to give me life. Today, I open up my heart. I ask you, please forgive me of all my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I place my trust not in what I do, but in what you've done for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Can you give a big hand to God right now? Praise God. If you prayed that prayer and you meant that from your heart, then guess what? The Bible says that you are forgiven of your sins. You are a child of God. And to invite you and encourage you to keep on going in this newfound relationship with God, we've got a special gift we want to give to you. At the end of that prayer page, you'll see a link. And if you want to touch that, it'll take you to a resource to help you in your relationship with God. We've got some other gifts we want to give to you to congratulate you too as well. And for those of you who are here who call throughout your home church, uh, we just believe in the work that God, that God is doing here. It's time to give our faithful tithes, our generous offerings. Know that when we seek God's kingdom first, he adds what? He adds everything we need. And not only does he add everything we need, he builds his church through us as well. And so let me pray for us one last time, and I'm going to hand it off to our online host as we close off our service today. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much that it is possible to find rest in your presence, and it's all because of Jesus. Jesus, we say it's all about you. It's about your glory. It's about your story. It's about your kingdom. It's about your your fame. And we say in our lives, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your church be built. Let your name be lifted. With that all in mind, we pray all of your blessing, protection, your healing, your comfort, strength, wisdom, and your Holy Spirit to fill every single person here until we next meet again. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen. That's it for us today. We love you guys. God loves you. We'll see you guys next week for the continuation of Heart at Rest. And we can't wait to see you again. Take care, everybody. Love you guys. Thank you, Pastor JB, for the powerful message and the demonstration of how to rest in God's presence. I will definitely hold on to this message and apply it to my personal time with God in the week to follow. Now for the announcements. If this is your first time visiting us, we would love to hear from you. Text me to 604-285-5770 or visit mythrive.info and we will mail you a Thrive stainless steel water bottle. It's our way of saying thank you for spending your precious time with us online. If you pray the prayer to receive Jesus Christ into your life today, we're so excited for you. Please let us know by texting BELIEF to 604-285-5770 or by visiting mythrive.info. We have prepared a gift that includes a series of videos that may answer some of your questions about Christianity and we hope that it will guide you on the right path to follow Jesus. If you would like to get baptized or find out more about baptism, go to mythrive.info forward slash baptism. If you're not yet part of a small group, I really encourage you to join one today. A small group provides a source of encouragement and accountability. It is a place where you can get connected with other thrivers, especially when we can only meet online. To sign up for a small group, simply visit mythrive.info today. Last but not least, we want to invite you to join us next week for episode 8 of the Hard at Rest message series. I found the messages in this series to be very helpful and practical. It's a perfect message series for you to invite your friends and family to Thrive Church online. Let's learn to have a rested heart in a restless world together. That is all for the announcement. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a privilege spending this time with you. Don't forget to give online at mythrive.info. Have a wonderful week and we will see you again next week at Thrive Church Online. Stay blessed and healthy and remember you are always in our prayers.